Hello again. From time to time, a single fact may be glimpsed through all the sound and fury of politics and ideology. A simple thing which sheds light on the seemingly intractable conundrum. In this case, a riddle to be addressed is the chronic lack of achievement, both academic and social, of people living in Western Europe who are of sub-Saharan African ancestry. This includes, of course, uh, most Caribbeans. No shortage of hypotheses have been advanced to account for the fact that black people do not seem to get into top universities in the way that Chinese and white students do, nor do they seem to progress professionally at the same speed as those of other ethnicities. Then too, there is the indisputable fact that black people are between six and nine times more likely to be diagnosed with schizophrenia in this country than are white people. Coupled with other things, such as underachievement at school and a greater likelihood of ending up in the criminal justice system, it certainly appears that there is something here which requires explanation. There is, of course, no shortage at all of explanations on offer, and which you choose often depends less upon rational thought than it does political allegiance. Left-wing people favour institutional racism as a catch-all explanation for what is seen. Right-wing types often prefer to blame genetic inheritance, hinting that the problems faced by black people are largely of their own making, rather than anything to do with society. There may perhaps be another reason for what is observed, which has no reference to either sociology or genetics. An adequate amount of vitamin D is vital for humans to remain healthy. That is pretty well, of course, the definition of a vitamin. We get it in our diet, in oily fish like mackerel, for example, but we also synthesise it in our bodies. Sunshine causes vitamin D to form as the ultraviolet rays of the sun penetrate our skin. That's fine for white people living in higher latitudes, of course, but not such good news for black people living this far north. Their skin blocks the ultraviolet rays and means that it is very difficult for them to synthesise vitamin D. As a result of this, 85% of black people in Britain do not have sufficient vitamin D circulating in their bloodstream. This is also because the diet of black people tends to be deficient in the vitamin as well. 95% of Africans and Caribbeans living in Britain do not get the recommended daily nutritional intake of vitamin D in their diet. In the description to this video, I give a link to an academic paper which contains this startling information. I also give a link to another paper on the effects of vitamin D deficiency in pregnancy. These effects are not good and have negative implications for the development of the foetus. Since 85% of black people in this country do not have sufficient vitamin D in their bodies, partly as a result of skin colour, but also due to diet, this naturally means that the majority of babies born to black women in Britain are probably at risk of the ill effects of this particular nutritional deficiency. Some of these effects are purely physical. Sharp-sighted viewers may have noticed that I am lopsided. One shoulder is higher than the other. This is a result of childhood rickets, which caused my spine to grow in a corkscrew shape. Rickets was quite popular in the late 1940s and early 1950s. Mother and baby clinics at that time used to dish out bottles of cod liver oil to combat it. Older viewers will perhaps remember the awful taste of that substance. Ricketts is making a comeback in this country for the same reason, vitamin D deficiency. Other effects on the foetus and growing child are subtler and can relate to the development of the brain. This is very bad news, of course, and behavioural difficulties in adolescence have been linked to this cause. In the description to this video, I give a link to another paper on this subject with the title Vitamin D deficiency in middle childhood is related to behaviour problems in adolescence. I wonder if anybody's joining the dots here yet. 
There's a lot of work currently going on in this field and efforts are being made to encourage members of visible minorities to alter their lifestyles and diets, especially during pregnancy. But any such work will take a generation or two to show any real effects.